Okay, I'd like to introduce uh, Ronnie McGrain, uh, a well-known character in Kells County Mead. Ronnie's just developed the electric car and uh, I've just been having a look at it earlier. Ronnie is the father of the famous golfer Damien McGrain. I'm sure people have heard of Damien. Um, Ronnie, if you want to tell us a bit about the car, please go ahead. Tell us why you did it and um, how you put it together and how it works. Yeah. Okay, Alan, good morning to you there. Um, well, I've always been interested in electrics and electric cars, wind turbines and the like. But from the from the age of in say, 20 onwards, uh, when I started serving time in Dublin, I used to see these electric vans going around delivering milk, and I says, you know, it'd be, it'd be a bit of progress, nice way to go. But looking at the vans, the actual uh, batteries were too heavy that the van had to be built around the batteries. Now, we came into a period then of the mobile phones and we had big bricks of mobile phones. Then the batteries in the mobile phone got smaller and smaller and smaller. Thus, the batteries you have in your existing mobile phone now is the technology. When I seen that, I said, right, now it's time to look at electric cars again. So, with that, I went out to a local scrap dealer and I uh, asked him, look, I'm looking for a small car and he asked me, what do you want? And I said, well, I don't know yet, say, because uh, let me see what you got. So he, he, he pointed out the window and he showed me this little thing. And I said, yeah, it looks smart enough and the like, it looks light enough for my project as well. And he asked me what I was it going to do. And I told him I was going to put, take out the electric, or the petrol engine, which was 2000 cc petrol guzzler, and put in an electric motor. So he thought that was a great idea and the whole lot. So, he he wanted 500 euros for the whole lot complete and I, he then he said he'd take the engine back for 200 euros so it left me with 300 euros for a body of a car so with that i decided right we make a move and moved on from there then i located a man with, with uh done maintenance on forklift trucks and the like and uh he had a, he used to maintain forklift trucks and he says that he had an old motor of a hoist of forklift truck. And this motor was for 50 years old, I should say. It was a ball of rust, as I say, on the ground. He said he didn't know what it was working about. There was no place under, no nothing. I said, look, I'll chance it. It looks good to me. You know, it has all the bits and pieces on it. There's nothing missing on it, is what I can see. So I brought it home. So with that then, um, I... Oh, put, took out the gearbox out of the car which contained the drives to the wheels and then I started to make the, the old motor up to the gearbox so the first thing I done was took the flywheel off the old petrol engine flywheel and this plate and this cows and the clutch of the, uh, generally um, and made it up basically to the motor bit of machining had to be done spacing had to be done have it the right spacing for the drives and clutch plate and all that you know a mechanic could know what I'm talking about there and I had to make a plate in order to do that to get all them adjustments right so that was all done and it was very simple to align it because I was able to connect the battery to the motor and on the alignment between the gearbox and the whole lot and testing it I was able to do that which you couldn't do with a petrol engine unless you had it geared up on the floor it's not simple so all them problems were all covered and sorted out no major problem at all. Then uh, the whole thing then was the whole unit then which was dropped into the the front of this particular car, uh, which is a Ford Puma. It's a uh, it's the same type of uh, say internals as a Ford Fiesta. The model, small little Ford's car. So with this uh, with this particular system that I have here, I could take it out and put it in a Ford Fiesta or any of the small Ford models for that matter because the, the internals and the mountains are all the same. So you can uh, convert any car that somebody comes along, they can give you a car, you can convert that for them? Yeah, you can convert You can convert any car, you know, there's okay. no reason why you can't. Basically, as I just say to people when they look at this, now, you know, even to the authorities, that the nose that car is a car with four wheels but when it comes down to engines it's either petrol diesel gas or steam for that matter but in my case it's an electric engine do you want to give us a look do you want to yeah, pop the yeah, bonnet and we'll have a look have a we'll have a go at that now okay and okay ronnie tell us about now the engine we what we have there now the engine that was in it previous was up 
across here. That's just the shape of the body. It was a 2000 cc engine. It was a hunk of metal steel. So what I took out was the engine and I left the gearbox, that bit there, from that to that is the gearbox. There's my motor. That's the motor there. Well, that's a forklift That's a motor. forklift truck motor. The motor is the same as what you have in your washing machine, uh, your electric water pump. Motor is a motor and that's what that is there. The only thing about that type of motor is it's a brush motor and a DC motor, which is old technology. Now, I went down this road because there was a possibility maybe it mightn't work. Now, I was confident that these things wouldn't work. There's no reason why they wouldn't work, but just I didn't want to be spending blobs of money uh, doing it as a kind of, let's say it was, a, it was a hobby in this case to do this particular one. Uh, and I, I, I'm a kind of fella that I don't take no for an answer and if there's a problem, I'll solve it, you see. So with that attitude, I don't go back, I just go on. <laughs> now, <laughs> there you go. What, what, d d d d this now car was, uh, you know, at all times I have to remember that I'm putting the car on the road. There's plenty of cars like this that are in, in, in St. Fields and things like that. Fellas put them together, but the, you know. But to have a car that's roadworthy and passed by all the various government authorities is a different kettle of fish. So with that, I had to be careful that I didn't alter or make any holes in the car that would change the design of Henry Ford's car. So this is our, the, uh, this is officially allowed legally to go on the road oh, this is to be used on the road. Okay. Tax insured. The whole lot. I even got a DOE. I got every conceivable piece of paper, the government paper, signed up and signed off by other people, just to make sure that every door was was closed behind me and this is powered by a battery bank 24 batteries 24 that you have in the car modern day mobile phone battery technology right and they, they are 200 amp hours yeah just so people know 12 yeah. volts yeah. 12 volt or 3 volt no the, you see the, the modern battery in your mobile phone is not like the old batteries <coughs> even when you take out your little battery for your your telephone or not your telephone you see your house phone or that or electric clock it's a small little one and a half volt cell the the, the, the new technology and the, the this type of nick and iron batteries is three and a half volts let's say just to round the figures uh, so and it's a rated at 200 amps now a battery of that size before would be something about two foot square in order for it to be uh, to be the same size, mm. this battery is only eight inches by eight inches mm. and four inches wide, and it, it's a, a power station, 200 amps of power. Mm. It's enough to weld. If you were to short it out or put a wire across it, it just burn the wire off or weld. And it is very light. I felt the weight of the battery, and I was amazed that it's 200 amp hours being so small. Yeah, it's actually. Um, it's actually, uh, oh, I lost the train of thought there. Yeah, it, it is a third of the weight and a third of the size mm. of an equivalent lead acid battery that you mm. have in your car, like your ordinary car. Yeah. Now, incidentally, going back to the battery situation, that battery there is the old, is the battery that was normally in the car. That has to stay in the car because of all the 12 volt electrics that's in the car, like the brake lights, lights mm. themselves, and the whole mm. lot. Now, the safety end of that is that supposing. They say, if you run out of petrol, if I run out of battery, not that battery, but the bigger batteries the back we look at, I have to be able to pull in off the side of the road and put on my hazard warning lights. I have to be able to do the same as well. Thus, this battery has to here, be here. We have to think of the health and safety first at all times. But um, that's, needless to say, all the questions and all that paperwork all had to be signed off by the relevant authorities as well. Now, that took 14 months. Mm. Now, why it took 14 months was the fact that this was new to the government. This was, say, a fella out there doing his own thing, and there's no reason why he shouldn't be put on, let you know, put on the road. Mm. It's the way we should be going. It's forward planning. It's the way to save the country. Now, we're just sitting inside the car here. Now we have all the electrics. Yeah. 
the newest addition now, which is only not 24 hours old yet, was the addition of a solar panel to assist with the charging of the batteries. Uh, that was brought on by the fact that we're after having such a huge amount of sun there so far. It says, look, sure, maybe we should be taking something from the sun. Now, uh, today, okay, is a dull day, but we still have an output from the panels charging the batteries. So, uh, we can probably be saying now that it's a solar powered electric car, technically. Now, uh, on the far side there, I have a, a couple of LEDs lit. But now, it's still in the experimental process. There is no reason why that shouldn't work neither. It's been proven through other sources, let's say, solar. You put solar panels in your houses now, now to charge. You have to run your television, mobile phones, or whatever, you know. Which is what we're working on at the moment, yeah. Yes, okay. But this one I was to assist, like I said, to, to charge the car. Now tell us, Ronnie, if you if somebody came to you and they wanted to have their car converted to electric, how much would the cost be to have it done? Well, put it this way, I, I've always said that a fellow that was handy with his hands at all could actually um, do this himself with a bit of help. In other words, the, you know, if, if you say if you were to come to me and say, look, how do I do it? Well, the first of all, I said, you're right. But well, should we get a small little car, say something like what I have here, and so they take out the engine out. Say it's only a matter of a bolt and you can't go wrong, just hold the bolt and drop it on the ground and then say we'll get a motor and we'll show you how to put the motor together. Now so what I can do is I can give you a package. I can organise a package of a motor, a controller to speed the, for your accelerator, uh, the battery pack, and all the bits and pieces wanted, which is not that much now. You put them, you know, in a small package. Yeah. And uh, just go ahead and start putting them all together. Like if anybody that used the Meccano sets, which I got a lot of training on when I was a young fella, or Lego as it was, account came after that, there is no reason why you couldn't do it. It's confidence is all you want, and just the willpower. Excellent. Don't take no for an answer. So what's the next stage for the electric car? What's your next plan? Well, the next plan is, okay, now I'm satisfied this works and I'm happy with it. Uh, it does me, it does a good, get a good distance from the car uh, from from the battery charge what is the mileage on the car how far would you get on a charge full well, charge at the minute now i can get 50 miles or 80 kilometers my maximum speed is 50 miles 80 kilometers as well yeah. mind you the maximum speed limit is 80 kilometers mm. now the thing there is that i can uh, one of the secrets of the car is i charge my car from in my garage at home in the house in my plug when I want to. I do not use the ones at the side of the road supplied by the ESB or SAAI because I won't give reasons because but they're not always convenient and they're not there when I want them to be there and they're not in the positions that I want them when I go somewhere. It's easier for me to go to a friend's house let's say 10-15 miles away and plug into his house with an extension lead and be drawn off his electricity and visiting him for nothing. Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So you could say, right, will it get me to Dublin? It will get you to Dublin. But when you get to Dublin, say if you're booking in Dublin, done stores, let's say, or, or a building site with most of our tradesmen are working on, you'll be able to get power on the building site to plug the car in and it's ready for you that evening to come home again. And the cost saving alone now, says everything, doesn't yes. it? Yes, put it this way, I charge my car for two euros a night on the off-peak electricity. You see, double tariff meter, in other words, most people have it. Off peak electricity, you run your machinery at night at a cheaper rate. So I, that's what I do. Set up the time switch, let's say that I charge the car between 12 o'clock and 8 o'clock in the morning for the cheap electricity, and that averages out every night at, at uh, 11 kilowatts. And it's actually less than 2 euros a night. That's fantastic. To, to do it, to do 50 miles and I just got along with there, no problem at all. Well, we'll be doing a show to go into more detail to the mm. spec. But mm. for now, Ronnie, thanks a lot for yeah. for being available for us. I'll just take a picture of the car here again. You're, you're welcome, Alan.